This is Radio TV Nut, and what you see is an Audio Plus classroom record player from 1984. You've actually seen this in a recent video. In the first video, I kind of gave it a brief look over as far as the amplifier goes, as far as squeezing a little more gain out of it. And by the way, this uses a plain Jane IC based amplifier, nothing fancy. And I really didn't come up with anything it, on first glance. But I think I'm going to examine this a little closer. And I'll even draw out a schematic for the amp to aid me in my efforts. Shouldn't take long to draw one out. And the reason I'm doing that is I'm, I'm wanting to do some cartridge experimentation. This uses an 89T cartridge which is the plug-in needle cartridge combination that was popular in school record players. When the stylus goes bad, you just unplug the whole cartridge and plug in a new one. They go by the numbers 81T and 89T. This is an 81TX, which is the diamond tip version. I just got two of these off of eBay. Well, Back in the day, these were a good idea because look at the price, $6.95 in 1971 figures. That was about what a, a standalone diamond needle would cost. Well, in today's world, the diamond version of this cartridge is hard to find, and the sapphire version with LP and 78 tips is... Well, they're getting scarce and expensive at usually 20 to 25 bucks. And when the needle wears out, then you're back to replace spending 20 or 25 bucks on a whole new cartridge. And by the way, a sapphire needle is not going to last that long. So, on these types of players, I'm trying to move away from this type of cartridge to using this type of cartridge, a Varco TN4B. Now the only problem with that is the a static cartridge like this puts out about 1 to 1.3 volts. This cartridge puts out about a half a volt. You wouldn't think that would make much difference, but it actually makes a lot of difference. If you install one of these cartridges without modifying the amp, then it, it will work, but the volume will be a good bit lower and the sound will be weak. And this is a cheaper record player anyway that has fairly weak sound even with the 89T cartridge, so it will definitely it will definitely need to be modified in some way or another in order to use this cartridge. If we're able to use this cartridge, the advantages will be when the needle goes bad, you can replace the needle for about six or seven bucks. And these cartridges are not as hard on records as an Aesthetic 89T. And also, when you flip from LP to 78, you're actually flipping the needle. You're not flipping the whole cartridge around. When you flip the whole cartridge around, that puts stress on the connecting wires, and I've fixed more than a few of these by by resoldering broken wires from the cartridge mounting holder. Okay, enough jibber-jabber. Let's open this up and see what we can do. Here's the amp. As you can see, not much to it. The audio output I see is an LM380N, which is a common audio amp. In fact, the Hamilton record players use the same IC, but the difference in this one and the Hamilton models is the Hamilton units have a transistor ahead of the IC for a preamp stage. On this one, they're just feeding the output of the cartridge directly into the IC. Okay, here's the schematic that I drew up, and as you can tell, I'm not much of an artist. This resistor here, this... 18k ohm resistor is what I'm interested in. It's amazing what pops into your head once you have it on paper, what you're looking at. Here's our cartridge. It feeds into the volume control. Output of the volume control, which is the wiper there, goes through a 15k ohm resistor. 
which goes to this 18k ohm resistor that's in parallel with this disk capacitor that goes to ground and then we move on into the signal input of the IC. Now this resistor and capacitor its purpose is sort of to equalize the output of the cartridge and to pad down the signal. Well, when I remove this resistor we get much more gain. So let's see what we've got here. How it sounds now. Yeah, that's a lot louder than it was before, so I think we can go ahead and install the new type cartridge. Okay, here's a better look at the original cartridge holder. As you can see, the original cartridge and needle combination just slides into the holder. And I'm going to keep the holder and this old cartridge because the 78 tip on it's still good. I can use it in some of my 78 RPM only players. The LP tip, obviously, as you heard, still works, but I can tell it's a little on the worn side. That's the reason I'm going ahead and replacing the cartridge. Okay, I have the new cartridge installed and the left and right channels tied together for a mono signal. And I might note that the quality of these newer cartridges is not always great. First, I had to start gluing the terminals in place to keep them from moving around. Well, the terminals seem to be okay on this one, but the uh, the little clip that holds the needle in, you can see it's moving, so I'm going to have to glue that in position. But what can you do? You know, that's if you're going to fix record players, you either have to gamble with new old stock cartridges or, or do the best you can with the new production crap. Now the next thing we'll have to do is adjust the tracking pressure, and that's easily done by moving this spring to the appropriate notch on the tone arm. And obviously this cartridge will weigh more than what came out of it. And I believe the recommended tracking force for this cartridge is 5 to 8 grams. So I want to get it somewhere in that vicinity, preferably towards the low end. Okay, I got it down to about 6 grams. And that's about right. With the resistor that I showed you earlier removed, it still has plenty enough gain for this cartridge. It's probably about the same volume level as what we had originally with the 89T, so that's, that's good. Now I mentioned this particular record player wasn't designed to get overly loud. I mean, this that IC is probably good for maybe one and a half, two watts at the most. I'd have to look the specifications up, but it's not it's not going to be as loud as the better quality models with a vacuum tube amp or a amp that uses discrete output transistors. Here we are with a 78, and thanks for watching, and hope you got something out of all of this. Ever since the day I met you, I got you where I want you, and I'm never going to let you get away from me. Here when I tell you, I'm the guy for you, and so you better stop the face that if you ever lose my love, you know you're not. These 78s are recorded at a higher modulation level than 45, so that's why it's louder. Okay, on second thought, I'm not gone. There's There are a few things that I need to go over before I conclude this. As you've already figured out, in order for us to keep these older phonographs alive that formerly contained a 
one to one point five volt cartridge we're going to have to take steps in order to use a point five volt cartridge because the one volt cartridges are getting to be non-existent and in order to do that we have to modify the amplifier now I wished I could tell you that there's a a one size fits all answer for your amplifier I wished I could say we'll just clip out the cartridge shunt resistor unfortunately I can't do that because there are many different amplifier designs you have tube amplifiers you have solid state amplifiers and there's just no one size fits all answer here but I'll take a few minutes to tell you some of the most common tricks that I use to squeeze a little more gain out of an amp in this particular amplifier I remove the 18k shunt resistor that's after the volume control you see here's our volume control here's the wiper here's a 15k ohm series resistor and then here's the shunt resistor in parallel with this capacitor now I could have probably also removed this capacitor and possibly altered the value of this resistor to give me a little more gain but like I said this amplifier I see is only good for a couple of watts and if you feed it with too much juice you're not going to get more volume out of it it's going to get to the point where it's just going to distort when you turn the volume up so so we only want to do just enough to get the required gain to make the amplifier work properly now in some amplifiers and this applies to both tube and solid state models the cartridge shunt resistor will be directly across the cartridge it, it won't be behind the volume control like it is in this set and this resistor can range in value generally anywhere between 150 k ohms up to say 2.2 meg ohm and a good example of this is that RCA Scholastic record player that there's a video of a while back it used a scheme like this and I believe it used a 150 k ohm resistor which in my opinion is a little bit on the low side and I can't remember exactly what I replaced that resistor with but it was I think at least a 470 k ohm you just have to experiment in some cases the unit will work better if you take the resistor completely out of circuit when you install a cartridge that has lower output than the original now the schematic here is for a tube type caliphone record player we have our 12 AV6 driver tube here we have our 50L6 output tube here and of course a silicon rectifier here's our cartridge goes through a 2.2 meg ohm resistor to the volume control this capacitor here is an isolation capacitor now on this particular record player that I also made a YouTube video about I replaced this 89T cartridge with the same kind of cartridge that I installed in the Audio Plus record player that's the subject of this video and what I had to do to this one to get some more gain out of it was number one I had to install an electrolytic capacitor from the cathode of the output tube to ground or across this 150 ohm cathode resistor the value is not critical anything between 22 microfarad and 100 microfarad at at least 25 volts should work satisfactory and also originally I had jumped out this resistor with a piece of wire then after I printed this schematic I read this note on here that says in order to reduce voltage amplification capacitor C3.02 microfarad has been replaced with resistor R1 2.2 meg ohm that's this resistor right here so I just simply replaced this resistor with a 0.02 microfarad capacitor and it seems like that helped a little bit 
our tonal quality improved a little and and it has adequate volume now with the P226 cartridge it's still not quite as loud and quite as full as what the original 89T provided but it's very acceptable another thing I might could have done to even squeeze some more gain is play with the values of the components in this feedback circuit here and possibly play with this cathode resistor but like I said you don't want to really go overboard here you want to do just enough to achieve the desired result you don't want to you don't want to drive your amplifier so hard that it's producing distorted output another common amplifier design that I run into is the simple one tube design that's often used in kitty record players that's basically this schematic cut in half without the preamp stage though these kind of record players use a high output three volt crystal cartridge to drive the output stage directly unfortunately those types of cartridges are no longer available and new old stock ones that are actually still good are rare now you can install a half a volt cartridge in a set like this but your volume won't be very high and you can if the set doesn't already have one you can add the cathode bypass capacitor like I did here that may or may not give you enough gain for your needs you can only be the judge of that but more than likely what you'll have to do is severely modify the amp to this type of circuit to include a, a driver stage and that way you can use a more modern 0.5 volt to 1 volt cartridge and get plenty of volume and unfortunately you'll run into some amp designs that are just not conducive to being modified now I honestly don't know what the circuit for this particular caliphone amplifier is I haven't looked at it but one thing about these models that hinders you from installing a cartridge like this in them is this little light that they have mounted at the end of the tone arm there's enough room for a standard 89T cartridge mounting bracket but there's not really enough room to mount one of these in there unless you rip the the light out in the bracket that holds the light the reason I know that is because I recently upgraded a 13T stereo cartridge on a stereo caliphone to a tetrad cartridge and I was able to install the cartridge but I had to do some finagling to make the cartridge fit so if you end up modifying one of these types of caliphone tone arms for a more modern cartridge you're either going to have to sacrifice the light or you're going to have to go with a smaller a physically smaller tetrad cartridge that can be made to fit in the tone arm and yes I would like to modify this one because the holder is broken the little flip lever is broken off and the holders are getting about as hard to find as cartridges are actually harder so we'll have to look into this one day to see about modifying it to work satisfactorily with a more modern tetrad cartridge okay that's really about all the tricks I know for right now if I think of anything else then I will certainly do another video on it hope you got something out of all of this and more to come later